so let's um, yeah, let's just continue. Um, we're going to make a slight uh, detour into uh, you know into um, like what we can do personally for personal productivity as as leaders, and uh, and really look at the background for that. You know, so uh, what do you think? Do can I be satisfied with the efforts put in, or do I need to look for results as well? You know, how do you evaluate? You know, you let's say you have someone on your team and uh, who's really you know doing a lot. They're putting in a lot of effort, but uh, um, but the results are are not you know are not reached or the targets are not met. Um, yeah, I just want to hear from you. Like, how would you evaluate? What would um, you know? What would you do in that situation? How would you handle things? Anyone? Pastor, I would I would go with the progress, uh, not just the results, because sometimes results might take time, but uh, progress is important to measure. Uh, for example, like when we do projects, like Six Sigma project might take about six months. But if you are measuring the productivity in two months, you need to see from which phase to which phase you progressed. You you may see the result after six months, but the okay. progress gives a good view of it. Right, right, wonderful. Thanks, Tarun. I think that was uh, that was very useful. So, um, so me, which, which means that um, even though we're going to evaluate the final result after six months. Uh, when we break down the whole, uh, you know, process into several phases, uh, we're going to be you're going to be evaluating the progress in each phase, right? Correct, or uh, is that how yes. it is? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's that's good, right? Okay. So in any case, uh, what you're saying is that um, there needs to be uh, progress uh, in line with the effort that is put in. Right, um, which means that well, there could be hard work uh, put in, or there could be smart work put in. But irrespective of that, there needs to be some movement, some momentum towards what we are working to, I mean, to what we are working towards. Right, and um, so that's something which is uh, important. So even in our own personal lives, uh, in, our, in our in our own personal uh, work that we do, or the ministry work. Uh, whatever, um, there um, there is a you know we need to evaluate whether it's been productive or not, whether it is yielding uh, results, right? Uh, whether we are moving towards what we want to achieve eventually, right? Um, I think that word progress is very helpful. You know when we when we look at results because when we look at results, we are looking. There, there could be a tendency to say, "Okay, I want it now, today, now, today." What is, uh, uh, you know, what has happened? Um, but when we look at progress, even though we are looking at results, but it is, you know, you move towards it, and uh, and that that is very very important. Yeah. Okay. So let's um, let me just share the screen. Okay, so we know that um, you know the, our Lord is gracious. Our Lord is kind. We know that He is patient, right? Uh, the agape, God kind of love. Uh, you know, He is patient. He is kind. He is loving, uh, but He's also looking for results. He's also looking for fruitfulness in our lives. Okay. Um, well, the thing is this, he understands where we are. He understands our limitations, um, but he he loves us, he cares for us, and he does not want to leave us in that place of uh, you know our limitations, uh, or maybe in that place where we are uh, struggling, right? He wants us, he wants to move us from that place uh, into a place of strength. He, he, in fact, pours out his spirit. He wants to make his strength uh, manifest in our in our lives, like in in order to 
uh, even overshadow and uh, you know uh, our, our weaknesses so that our, our weaknesses are completely taken over by his strength and then we go beyond uh, what we can do you know what we can because he says uh, in Ephesians 3 he says that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly or be, you know beyond all that we can ask or even imagine right and um, when you look at John 15 uh, the Lord Jesus talks about, uh, you know, he gives the picture of uh, how he is the vine and we are the branches, uh, the one of fellowship, one of, uh, uh, you know, where the, uh, of identity, right? one in which there is power that is flowing from him to us. The fact that we are partakers of divine nature, you know, everything is just contained in that one picture. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Um, and we are branches for a reason, because the branch is uh, the fruit-bearing part, and uh, we are called to bear fruit, to be fruitful. Okay, um, let's let's just read through uh, some of these uh, verses, uh, verses one to eight. The Lord Jesus says, "I am the true vine, and my Father. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, He." prunes that it may bear more fruit you are already clean because of the word which i have spoken to you abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples okay so we see this picture of the son being the vine the father and dresser and we are you know the branches and the branches uh, the the exhortation to be to abide in the vine you know that's the problem with living stones living branches they tend to move uh, so saying you know up the vine stay with the vine uh, and you will bear fruit. Without him, we cannot do anything. And so we draw from him. And, uh, it, it, uh, you know, if, if you look at uh, verse four, five, 5, actually, but it says, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Okay, now, so that's the reality. As we abide, as we stay, as we draw from him, as he transforms, as he changes us, our even our perceived weaknesses, our, our personalities, you know, which are not really helping maybe, um, you know, uh, maybe certain things in the flesh, certain things that need to be renewed, the unrenewed mind is maybe limiting, maybe uh, unwilling, you know, maybe it's fleshly, maybe it's carnal, you know, does not bring the purpose of God us uh, in our own lives and the Lord is saying you know this is it you draw you you draw from me you stay connected you abide in me and you will bear fruit okay. so which is very very encouraging and in doing so in being fruitful the father is glorified okay so uh, so we can you know uh, we can apply this in our personal lives we can apply this in our you know, uh, work and profession in our ministry and and everything is that we are we are you know uh, we are drawing fruit uh, from Him. Right? So spiritually, we can say, okay, fruitfulness uh, and uh, you know the work or, or our character and everything is changed because of the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Uh, we are bearing fruit, the the fruit of the Spirit, the ultimate out, outcome of the work uh, is you know we see that love joy peace and faithfulness and on so on you know, being visible 
tangible in our lives. And when you get the natural side of it, you know, our expression of that in our daily life, you know, our lives being productive, our work being productive. Okay? So, um, you know, look at some practical things here. Okay, to be productive, um, you know, it goes without saying that uh, when we are efficient, okay, uh, when we are efficient in the work we do, then it will affect our productiveness, productivity, right? So efficiency, you know, it depends on uh, the kind of input that we put, the kind of effort that we put, the kind of thought behind the effort that we put. You know, it it uh, influences the outcome, right? Uh, I remember uh, reading a, a very an interesting quote. Uh, let me see if I can just take it, uh, pick it up. Um, yeah, it said, "Don't be upset by results you did not get." Okay, so I mean that's a very really nice, nice thing. Don't be upset by the results you did not get. The second part of it is this: by the work you did not do. You know, uh, don't be upset by the results you did not get, by the work you did not do. Um, so the thing is that when the work, when we slack off, and when you know there is, um, it's not when we are, you know, when we are not really performing to our full full potential or capacity. We know it, right? And uh, we cannot expect the outcome to be different, and and we cannot be, we cannot say, okay. You know, I'm disappointed by what has come. You know, what is what is the outcome? Because you know, the input was not there, so we, we can't really do that. So, here are some uh, practical things. Okay, so with with this understanding that that God is for us, and the Lord is looking for fruitfulness in our lives. You know, He's cheering us on. He's not like you know, it's not like a stern master saying, okay, do this or else, but he's with us. We know that he never leaves nor forsakes us. He, we have access to his wisdom. Um, we have access to his ability and, uh, and therefore he's making this change in us, uh, transforming us, changing us so that we can be effective, efficient, and be productive. Okay. So when you say, when you look at that, um, well, we we want to be productive, and right? we want to do we want to do our best. And uh, several scriptures that we you know we've been looking at, you know, Colossians three, you know, do it as unto the Lord. Right? Whatever you do, do it with all your heart. Um, whether it's in word, whether it's in deed, do it uh, with all your heart as unto the Lord. You know, three seventeen and twenty three talks about the kind of. Uh, you know, uh, mindset that we need to have uh, uh, when we carry on, when we take up any task. Okay? Some practical things is, you know, here's a list. We'll just go through this. Uh, when we organize uh, ourselves, our lives, our work, then we are better. We are we are efficient. You know, it's a simple thing, but it can really, you know, make a, it's like a hinge, you know. Uh, it's a small thing, but it can carry a heavy load. Right? And it's it's something that enables the door to open. So, organize when you are when we you and I are organized, then we are more efficient, and the outcome is also better. The product there's better productivity. Okay, so we looked at that right, organizing our people, organizing resources, organizing our time, and so on. So, so be organized. Okay. Um, so it, it does take some time to get organized. Uh, it does, um, uh, well, take some effort in order to continue to be organized, right? It's easy to make a mess and it's easy to keep things disorganized. And um, so organize, being organized will help us, you know, whether it's a file that you're, you know, whether it's a file, whether it's a document, whether it's uh, information where you put it uh, on your laptop, on your computer, there's so much, right? Um, simple things would be, you know, even our wardrobe and, you know, um, Always tell our team, you know, our worship team, uh, guys, you know, don't look for clothes for what you're going to wear and don't think about it on Sunday morning, right? Because everyone leaves home early. Uh, like I, I leave home by 6.30 a.m. 
um, to be in church by 7 a.m. because the service starts starts at 8. So we have a sound check at 7. Uh, so most days I'm leaving by 6.30. And if it's, uh, you know, if it's the other location, I'm leaving by, like, let's say, 7.30 or so. So there's that's not the time to get up and, uh, you know, and, and think about, contemplate about what I'm going to wear and what will go, you know, what will be matching with. No, you've already decided, you've already, uh, you know, it's already ironed and kept and, uh, you know, a lot of things can go wrong on Sunday morning, right? So uh, you're not looking for the iron, you're not looking to iron it. And then you realize, uh, oh, this button is gone or this is not there and the stitches, you know, it, it was fine the last time I wore it and all that. So, you know, uh, get organized. Uh, do it the previous day, let everything be ready. So you don't have to even think. You, all you do is just get up and uh, get ready and go. You know? So you see that um, you know, this is something that we just tell the teams over and over again. You know, this is what you do. So organize for efficiency. Right? Second thing is to reuse for efficiency. Um, templates, you know, if, it's a, if it's a letter, you know, maybe if it's a you know, a lot of communication happens, you know, if it's a church, a ministry, right, you're constantly, you're sending out information, right? Uh, maybe it's a church and uh, maybe you want to send out a welcome email to people. Uh, maybe uh, you want to send out what happened, what's happening or what happened on Sunday. Uh, like we normally have a rewind email, which uh, talks about um, the message, the message outline, um, the, uh, you know, where you can access it and so on. So it's, it typically goes out on a, on a Tuesday. So there is also an email which goes out when, um, you know, when someone uh, passes away, when someone goes home to be with the Lord. Uh, and there's all kinds of communication that's happening, right, in a, in a ministry, in a church, and so also in, in a different organization. So it's best to uh, reuse certain things, right, uh, for efficiency. Um, so you cut down on time. Yeah. Of course, you know, you can, you can change, you can refine, you can, uh, you know, add to things, um, add to it, delete it. But it's good to have some templates Right, so so you you already have a you know standard format. Maybe you want to thank some people because they serve. Maybe it's a guest speaker who came. Uh, you know, have a standard uh, letter. You can always add to it. You know, uh, you can always add some some special things that they that you notice that you observed uh, in the way they ministered. You can always do that. But uh, this would really help. You know, and especially if if there are you know. 10 things to be done, I know 20 things to be done before afternoon, and this would really help. Um, so whether it's a PowerPoint, whether it's a, a document, whether it's a letter that's going on, reuse it, right? Whether it's a, even if it's a, you know, an appointment letter that you want to send out, uh, a job description, right? Have a template so you can reuse this over and over again, right? rosters especially scheduling people um, we can reuse things okay so uh, i'm sure there could be many other things that you can reuse um, and uh, you can use it so that the work becomes uh, you know even more efficient right okay work ahead of time you know definitely you know these are some things I, and i'm not talking uh, you know sharing this from the place of being an expert I, i'm learning I struggle in these some of these things, and I'm still trying to overcome some of these things and make it consistent in my life. But uh, you know, working ahead of time, right, uh, so that uh, we can, you know, do things. Uh, there's no rush. We do it with excellence. There's enough thought that goes into you know every task. Um, so it, which, which means that we work back. You know, sometimes we misjudge the time that it takes. Right. And we say, oh, there's no problem. I can get it done. No, that's fine. But then you realize you sit down to do it and you realize that there's so much more. Right. So working ahead, uh, really evaluating the task and saying, okay, it's going to take me maybe two months to get this done. So therefore, let me start ahead. Okay. And start work ahead and uh, uh, so that I can finish it on time or even before time. Right. So, um, so, uh, put some time frame to every task, to every work, 
okay or in other words time box right your work so that uh, we don't have to you know if you're sitting to draft a letter and you don't we're not spending like two hours on it right uh, well you take about five minutes or ten minutes and that's it uh, and you say okay this is the task i'm done with it these are so many calls that i need to make and i'm going to do it in you know this is the uh, you know x number of hours or so many minutes i want to finish it right so, so put a time frame to it to the task and and work ahead okay um i mean these are some practical things i'm sure you know everybody's doing this uh but i'm just I, 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 but it's good to reiterate right some of these uh, simple foundational things okay uh, do the important most important uh, work uh, during the best working hours okay i'm sure that some of us for some of us it could be you know the first few hours or you know before afternoon you know we function the best <clears throat> we are the most attentive we are the sharpest uh, at that time right maybe 8 to 12 is when we are the sharpest right everything's firing and one cup of coffee and then you're all good to go and you know you're you're sharp then so do the most important work or do the uh, most challenging work um, during that time right now maybe post lunch is when you sometimes you know you tend to slow down okay and you can prioritize the other things maybe some routine tasks which do not require so much of thought and effort maybe you can you know prioritize that a little later when you're not when your energy levels are a little low right the best best working hours for the important work for the challenging work okay so when it comes to challenging work sometimes we tend to postpone it right uh, okay i will it's it's difficult i will not you know let me let me do it later and uh, let me do it uh, you know, later in the day you know, we are not really we, we we're doing tasks that we really enjoy doing maybe these challenging the difficult ones are something that we don't really enjoy so we tend to you know reschedule it later and say okay i'm going to do the most enjoyable things first okay but the thing is the later never happens right uh, energy levels are down and then the challenging work okay say okay let's let me do it the next day let me postpone it uh, and then it, it never happens and then it's so close to the deadline and it's daunting it is challenging and uh, you know, we're spending whole nights doing it so tired the brain is tired physically you're tired and we're not able to give our best right so uh, the most challenging work the most important work you do it during our best working hours okay um you know there are certain tasks that uh, we uh, you know it's maybe it's a specialized task maybe you you are the one person who's skilled best skilled to do you're the best best person to do it or maybe you know you're the person who can take a decision on it right so so you do do those tasks right um and uh, you know uh, i'm just trying to think of some ministry related examples maybe it is to uh, you know uh, prepare the message for sunday right no one you can't delegate it you, know, you have to do it maybe it's a song list that you need to send to the team now if you are the worship leader then you have to do that uh, you know so it's things like that where there's no one else you know but but you and you need to do that and you're the one who is uh, best skilled for that and maybe you're the best person for that do that there are other tasks which can be delegated which can which others can handle um then you know by all means go ahead and do that okay so uh so, so can we can do it well okay we're going to learn more on you know delegation and all that in life skills course uh, just again very interesting uh, very practical i think this would be in i don't know probably the next semester or so yeah so um so you know delegate to others um who can do it well and uh, maybe who can um uh, you you don't have to do it yourself okay 
okay then rest and refresh rest is uh, very important recharge we get renewed we get totally refreshed and uh, and suddenly solutions come you know, that's the way it works for you know when we have a good time of rest and maybe even during the sleep you know the answers are coming right now i remember you know uh, for one uh, i think what we used to call as uh, big sunday and these were evangelistic sundays where we invite people um, for the church service and usually there's some lunch happening some special things happening after the service so um, so i was really struggling with an opening song you know for so i'm thinking of the congregation there are believers there are uh, maybe there are people who don't know the lord also there and then what 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 do i think as an opening song and i and i remember you know saying okay god you know i thought 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 about it nothing happened and i just you know slept and i remember waking up with this song like uh, in my heart the, or a part of a song and singing that part of the song and immediately i just said yeah yeah this is it this sits well so sometimes you know rest and the refreshing it just gets us recharged renewed and and god can sleep to us. i mean speak to us uh you know when we are resting when we are relaxed okay um exercise to increase efficiency yeah, physically you know uh, to stay sharp exercise uh, be physically active okay um i'm sure you can add to that list some personal things um uh, i'm sure you have your own you know personal hacks um how you can you know do things efficiently so add to that list right okay um we're going to look at uh, another thing which is maintaining personal strength okay now you know when you you are a leader uh and uh, when you know you you are holding uh, quite a bit of weight of responsibility and uh, you know there are tasks to be done there are you know there are things to be done there are decisions to be made um well uh, one aspect that you need to i mean you and i we need to really um uh, take care of is our personal strength okay spiritually physically you know our emotional strength everything uh it becomes our responsibility it is our responsibility okay we need to understand that um, you know on this side of eternity in this you know in our physical bodies there are limitations and there are no limitations to the spirit where the lord jesus said you know the spirit is willing but the flesh unfortunately has its limitations because of the fall of man right so so the thing is we need to be careful we need to be intentional about maintaining our strength, whether it's physical whether it's spiritual um you know we need to keep that that's our responsibility as as much as we, you know go to the lord in prayer and we as much as we you know read the word and and stay in the word and and you know pray and and the spirit and worship and so on so um this is uh, this is our responsibility okay um Isaiah 40 was 28 to 31 have not known have you not heard the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength right so renewal of strength comes from the lord when we make time to be in his presence or to wait upon him when we receive from him our strength is renewed okay um maybe in the business of ministry the you know uh, in the business of things uh be sometimes um that personal time with god you know takes a back seat it's maybe it's how it 
used to be it becomes maybe a routine it be, maybe it, it becomes th these are some dangers right it becomes more of uh, you know you're, you're spending time in order to minister right you're spending time in order to prepare for something in order there maybe there's a meeting maybe there's an event maybe there's a you know there's a there's a bible study in the evening maybe there's uh, you know there's something there's a youth uh, service there's a that service and this was maybe there's a seminar and 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 uh, maybe you know we come to that place where we are spending time in order to you know give we are preparing something and all us you know time with the lord if it's going to be that then our strength yes there is strength in that also i'm sure the lord will speak and we're sure the you know we are you know handling the word so there is something that we're receiving but there's nothing that can um, uh, that can replace or they can substitute uh, us being in the presence of god us exclusively spending time in the presence of god to hear him speak to um, to receive from him right to pour out our hearts to him right whatever is causing a drain on our energy and strength you know all those emotions all the negativity all those you know all those fears that are you know just draining off our strength you know, we should come and to cast everything at his feet and to receive from him right maybe there are regrets maybe there are disappointments you know and these things we try to mask it in the sense okay you know because it's all there right to come and to just pour out to unburden you know all those things at the feet of the lord and and to receive his strength okay those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength okay uh, isaiah 30 and verse 15 for thus says the lord god the holy one of israel in returning and rest you shall be saved in quietness and confidence shall be your strength but you would not right so uh, the importance of spending time to to be renewed spiritually right um the second thing is also to to not plateau off to not come to a place of um of being stagnant but to continue to grow okay continue to grow to keep growing okay. the, um, the the thing happened I mean, what happens is like when we are emotionally tired okay that is when we we don't want to keep growing okay maybe we are dealing with some hurts uh dealing with some disappointment maybe we are discouraged and uh, definitely there's no you know there is no fire for us to keep learning to keep growing right so we need to receive healing right? be whole be made whole and uh, you know and, and also you know when we are disappointed when we when there are a lot of regrets and maybe relationally also you know um the things are not really in place or maybe you know we're still bitter we are fighting there's a lot of strife now, all that is going to drain away uh all the you know the uh, the impetus that we need the momentum and, and also the 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 desire to dream with god and walk with god and go forward with god just think about it all these things just drain away you know all those desires and the dreams right so um one has to deal with that first in order to come to that place and and keep on i mean i mean moving forward to keep learning to keep growing uh and you know to have that desire okay so so i i'm not sure where we are you know where where you are uh if there's a if there's a hunger for more you know if there's a desire for more or is it on you know like a, a autopilot kind of mode right sometimes it happens you know we are oh i'm attending class i'm logging off and i'm tired and i'm just tired i just don't want anything more there are so many things that are draining off that energy and uh, uh, my physical strength and and the focus right so receive healing 
receive God's strength and uh, and and be an overcomer. You know, be healed, be made whole, and uh, let God renew that appetite, appetite for more of Him. Right? So keep learning and keep you know for us to keep learning, for us to keep growing, and. Uh, uh, so many sources, resources, uh, so many ways that we can do it. Listening to sermons, podcasts, and reading books, uh, and listening to books, right? Uh, being read out, audio books, whatever works. Right? So many ways by which we can actually uh, receive, right? And keep learning, and uh, and we can do that, right? Okay, uh, interact with others who encourage and inspire you. Uh, again, uh, uh, I remember, you know, in, a, in our early, in, in my early days as a Christian, that I would, I would meet with this friend. Like I, I would have gone through a lot during the week, you know, struggling with temptation, um, you know, just coming to terms with this new identity, and uh, and and also, you know, uh, uh, all these questions and etc. So. Uh, Typically on a Saturday he would come home because Saturday we would go to the uh, the church where we were, and we would spend some time in prayer. And uh, so before that he would just drop by home, and we would spend some hours just talking. Mostly he'll be talking, I'll be listening. So he'll be just talking about you know various things, uh, encourage, very encouraging. You know a lot of testimonies of what's happening in his life, what's happening in uh, you know others' lives, and so on. And at the end of which you know I'll be so encouraged and so inspired so motivated to continue on with God, right? Uh, and even now, you know, there are certain people or certain videos that I watch, you know, when it comes to just be fired up, you know, in my zeal uh, for evangelism, personal evangelism and missions and so on. So certain people that I, you know, just listen to that I watch and watch, the, see the way that they minister and, right? So, so inspirational and an encouragement. Right, so interact uh, with people, and uh, we are the body of Christ. Right? Um, as believers, we've been, you know, we are part of the spiritual body of Christ, and that's how God designed it. And uh, we we see in um, Ephesians. Let me just read out that verse. Um, yeah, it's Ephesians four, uh, right after you know Paul writes about. Um, the um, the fivefold ministry. Okay, he says, um, uh, verse fifteen, Ephesians four fifteen. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him, unto him, uh, into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and um, knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Okay, let's read that again. The whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So this is how you know we've been designed, we've been you know placed in um, the spiritual body of Christ and every part does its share. Right. Every part does its share of uh, offering strength uh, and causing the other member to work and and grow, and it together it causes it causes growth of the body. So, so we see that like interacting with others who encourage uh, us and uh, who inspire, who motivate us. Um, this is how God designed it. Right? This is what fellowship is about. So. Um, Maybe there's a life group, maybe there's a you know Bible study and this time of fellowship, maybe it's just a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session, but you know, do that and uh, you will be encouraged, you know. Do that as a leader, you know. Uh, so that's the thing, you know. Sometimes leadership is uh, you know, it's like a very lonely journey, you know. It's like um, so but make sure that you surround yourself with others. <coughs> Excuse me. Others whom you can you know, open up your lives to and uh, share, and uh, like we, it may not there may not be many people, but then at least you know uh, there could be few whom you can you know share, whom you can draw strength from, right? Uh, obviously, you know, there's always Lord who's available. 
that God has also designed for us to interact with people, to be a strength to, to receive strength. Okay. Take time to exercise and rest. Goes without saying, you know, um, uh, maybe uh, you know, just to dwell on it a little bit, I'm sure there are others who are experts in it, but then, you know, exercising. Uh, many times we we go to that verse. Let me go to that verse. You know, bodily exercise. Um, what is that verse? Can someone help me out? Is it Timothy? Uh, um, yeah, First Timothy four, verse eight. Okay, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of that of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Right, so it's actually contrasting between physical exercise and exercising in godliness. Right, uh, it's talking about godliness. You know? um, yes, which is which is very very true. With the, um, we also need to understand that there is a connection between the body, the mind, the spirit. Um, and we need to take time to look after this physical body that God has created. Okay, um, And as ministers of God, as Christian leaders, uh, we need to start stewarding that uh, right from maybe right from today, right, right from the time you're hearing this, if you've not, you know, if there's been an abuse of the body, you know, if you're not exercising, um, you know, just some, you know, the practical thing is uh, our muscles will be weak. Okay. And it came as a, okay, I'll just probably stop here. Uh, it, uh, you know, be thankful, keep your vision refreshed. Okay. But anyway, I'm talking about the physical exercise and rest, you know, muscles are weak. The stuff that I, I could do, uh, maybe pre pandemic, you know, before the lockdown and, you know, pre COVID thing, you know, two years back, um, physically, I realized suddenly that, uh, well, I could do it. I tried to, I could do some 20 push ups or, you know, 22 push ups one stretch but here I was struggling to do one you know one and I just I was lying on the floor I realized that our muscles do grow weak right and we need strength to carry out what God has called us to carry out right? we need strength to do it uh, the flesh is weak the spirit is willing right so uh, it is not unspiritual to take care of our bodies Right. It is not unspiritual to, to, you know, to not overeat, to eat healthy. Right. It's not unspiritual to maybe you know exercise and you know, start where you are, uh, and just don't overdo it. But um, you know, some of those chronic pains actually disappear when you exercise. You know, you realize it because when the muscle becomes stronger, and you know, this is uh, personally, I'm just talking about the back pain that I had, I was really very, very skeptical about, you know, going and doing those exercises, which were targeting that very area, uh, but started out in a very gentle manner, you know, just the stretches and, and doing those things. But uh, then I realized, hey, the back is strong. The pain is not there anymore, right? So certain things uh, we need to do in the physical and uh, exercising and adequate rest, rest for the body, rest for the mind, something that is uh, very, very necessary. Rest is when our body actually repairs. Uh, so you know that our body repairs, our body, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that are happening. Um, so please don't ignore that, right? Don't, oh, that's unspiritual. No, it is connected and it's very important. Right. Okay, we'll stop here. Have a great weekend. Very nice having you guys here. God bless. We'll meet again next week. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Right. See you. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Right. Bye bye. Have a great time of ministry. All those who are ministering over the weekend. Bye -bye. Thank you.
Thank you, Pastor. Right, see you.